Cubiest. It's late. It's uh, dark outside. So I hope this video turns out well for you guys. Um, but it is dinner time. And I'm going to see if my student can cook some fish. light okay so black and fish okay so now this is the blacking season just turn it to the sprinkle and we're gonna put the blackening seasoning on both sides so go ahead and and see how heavy it's going on it needs to be heavy all over it completely covered and, and we're going to do that to both sides yeah that's good and then flip it over and do the other side same way Now we're going to do the other one the same way. Just make sure they're both fully covered with the seasonings. And if that one starts to get empty, I have another one. Both sides. All right. That's good. Flip it over. Do the other side the same way. Hopefully there's enough in that container to do the whole thing. And right now our grill is on high. Our griddle down here is on high. A little light still on. But uh, you gotta get the griddle really hot so it's it's probably pretty pretty hot right now good deal all right so we're going to do one at a time on this griddle go ahead and close that seasoning up it's going to fall and spill seasoning all over the place all right and then get it up off the bed because it's going to fall off that rack set it on top here yeah, i'll take it i'll take it that way it doesn't fall okay now uh somewhat in the middle of the griddle you're going to put squeeze that butter on there and, and you know, be liberal with the butter too. It needs to be quite a bit because it's going to start burning off as soon as you put it on the griddle. See? Just burning off. So very liberal with it. Okay, alright. Now, uh, go ahead and lay one of those fish fillets right in the middle of that grease. And it's going to start smoking and it looks like it's burning a lot, but it's going to be just fine. And what, we, what we're waiting for, I'm going to let the windows down. See how strong it's getting in here? Okay, guys, we know that you guys can't see how smoky it's getting in here. But that is, that's just a part of, of black meat. It, it, it creates a lot of smoke. And see how the butter is starting to turn a little, a little brown? The butter isn't burning. It's just the... Uh, the seasoning getting into the butter and uh, we're gonna let the fish cook until it begins to turn white and it should take about maybe two minutes and we'll flip it to the other side maybe another two minutes and then this filet will be done and we'll do the same thing again so we'll get right back with you guys 
soon as this one's done. All right, we flipped it. And that's about almost done. I just want to let you guys see what it looked like uh, after we flipped it. You see the blackening season is, is taking color, so it looks really good. And this one is almost ready to come off. So as soon as we get it off, uh, we'll plate it up and take it from there. All right, so now you got it plated. So we're gonna put a little bit of butter over it. Just, just a little bit more. Yep, that's good. It'll start melting in a minute. You can, you can actually use your fork and kind of thinning it out over it, kind of spread it over it with your fork. Yeah, just like that. Okay, that's good, right there. Now, the, uh, the tomato relish. Let me get that out. Okay, now, use your, your towel and kind of dry your, wipe your fork off a little bit. So, yeah, clean your fork off just a little bit. Perfect. And just get you a fork full of the relish like that. And put it right over, right in the center of the fish. Uh, yeah, go one more time. A little bit more. You'll like that stuff. That's good, just like that. And lit. Is that a little spill? Okay. Just like that, kind of clean up a little bit. Yep, see how it's all rolling? That's why we... We always put the tops on them so that they don't just go sliding everywhere. Okay, now go ahead and fork off the plate. To the side. Yes, side. There you go. Now put your relish up so on, on the, to the side up there so it don't get in your way. And your salad. And look at there. So, put that napkin out of the view. You don't want to see that. You got the you know, make it look presentable there. Okay. So, tell you what, get your fork out of the way. And, and then put your plate, your 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 salad next to your plate, you know, it's going to make it look presentable. That's what you're trying to do. Okay. Now, we have black and fish with tomato relish and a salad. And our other one is it's down there cooking right now. So you can take a fork full of the fish. Just break off your little piece with your fork. Do it flaky. Perfect. Yeah, just see what it's like. And this is the first time you have blackened fish, right? Yep. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. You like that, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Yep. Now, on the next fork full, uh, put that fork full in your mouth and then before you chew it all up get you a little bit of relish and taste it with the relish and, it, it, and it'll hit the palate a little bit different there you go Let's just get you a little bit okay <coughs> see that relish adds a little bit more bite to it it, it, it kind of smooths out the the, uh, the 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 bite from the blackening it's pretty good. You like that? Yeah. All right, get full. YouTube, we are done eating and I am pretty full. He did a fantastic job. That he doesn't have a a uh, a strong palate for spicy food, so. I do have two more fillets uh, in the fridge, in the freezer section there, and I'll let him cook those uh, in a different manner. I might try a uh, an air fryer, but the problem with, the reason I haven't bought an air fryer yet is because you know, it's just, you know, a limited amount of space in here. I think I just may bake it in the, uh, in the oven, but uh, um, I kind of would like to try an air fryer you let you guys let me know what you think the problem is like i said it's just you have a limited amount of space in these trucks and i mean i got a lot of appliances in here already so it, you know kind of takes up a lot of room but uh i'm trying to get some light there i am uh he did a fantastic job 
but uh, I'll make the next fish. Well, I'm going to let him make it just like the last time. He's going to do all the rest of the cooking in the morning. He's going to cook breakfast. Uh, we just eat, you know, bacon and eggs or sausage and eggs. Uh, nothing too big. I've started this um, somewhat of a Kiko or Kidro, whatever it is, diet. And, uh, man, I've only been doing it for like maybe, maybe two and a half months or something like that. And I'm down like 18 pounds, and uh, and I couldn't even eat the whole fillet uh, tonight. And I normally, eat, you know, both pieces, both fillets, but I couldn't even eat the whole fillet, and my stomach is starting to shrink. It's, it's a good thing, and I keep getting out of the light. How's that? Uh, but you know, you know, no grains or uh, potatoes and stuff like that. I had to cut all that out and, and sodas and stuff. But I got to have tea. You know how I am. Got to have tea. But, you know, uh, cut way back on all the rest of that stuff. Most of it I don't even do anymore. Like breads. Look at it. I don't, I don't mess with it. And it really makes a difference. So if you guys want to try something, you know, get out of try. I'm not real big on diets, but I'm not missing the stuff that I shouldn't be eating. So it's working out really well. But my student did a damn good job uh, with the dinner tonight. And, uh, I hope you guys are picking up on some of this stuff when you get out get out here and start driving. You know, figure a way to do some cooking, okay? If you go grocery shopping for yourself, you cook for yourself, the amount of money you're going to save is tremendous. Believe me. Big difference. Plus, you can make better food. If you gotta buy it. Then you're going to be able to buy these uh, truck stops and restaurant stuff. It's just overpriced foods. And it eat up a large portion of your income. So, nah. Get away from that. So, uh, again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you when I see you. Hey, everybody, 50 Plus here. What do I do when my recruiter won't return my calls? They're lying to me. They don't have answers to the questions I'm asking. Problem is, once I get those questions, it's already too late. Industry standard. Once a recruiter has got you, they got you. You belong to them. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you my recruiter's information. Her name is Autumn, and if you're thinking about joining Swift, that's who I want you to contact. Give her a call. She's going to send you through the process. Eventually, you're going to wind up on a mentor's truck. When you get in that truck, you're going to be in that truck for 200 hours. For 200 hours, I want your phone in the bunk. If you're willing to do that, I'm going to send you a blue-powered headset. You need to let Autumn know 50-plus sent you.